now here's Jack Smith, and you asked for it. You know, in these days on television, you see a lot of Western heroes. But on location today is a real life Texans, a real fighting man. Raised as an orphan, wounded three times in the war, our nation's most decorated soldier, winner of the Congressional Medal of Honor. He's the author of a bestseller and a motion picture star. No more need be said to introduce Artie Murphy. Hi, Jack. Hello, everyone. Artie, we're proud to be able to answer so many requests by having you on the show. Well, Jack, I'm very grateful to all the people who wrote in and asked for me. Well, you've got a lot of fans, Artie, but few people have seen you in the role of the man who's dedicated a great deal of his time to further the cause of the cow pony, the quarter horse. Jack, it's true. I guess I never get tired of talking about the quarter horse. He's the workingest horse in the world, and he can outrun anything on four feet for a short distance. Well, as a boy in Texas, you and the cow pony must have gotten acquainted pretty early. Well, as a matter of fact, we didn't, Jack. On a farm back in Texas in the early days, was we had plow horses. And we used to sneak them out and go in the pasture on Sundays and race them, but actually I didn't get acquainted with a well-bred quarter horse until after World War II. Now, we understand you own a ranch in California and a whole stable of working quarter horses. Yes, I do, Jack. I have a ranch near Pierce, California, and I do have working quarter horses, also some thoroughbreds. So I find the breeding end of the horse business very interesting, and also, of course, I enjoy going to the shows and, and watch these horses perform. Well, how can you tell a quarter horse by sight, and where does the name come from? Well, to answer your question sort of in reverse, Jack, I'm, I'm not sure I can correctly answer the one about its name. It's a little bit obscure, but I can show you what a top quarter horse looks like. This particular horse I'm riding today is Joe Queen, my, one of my favorite quarter horses. And a very short time ago, he was on the, on the racetrack. But Harold Faring, one of the top trainers in California, has taken him over and has been showing him for me. If I could, I'd like to call Harold in to help us show the horse to best advantage. Would you please, Harold? A good quarter horse will usually have a heavy muscled sloped shoulder a good long neck, and a very short back. A certain amount of thoroughbred infusion in the American Quarter Horse the past few years has greatly increased his speed and working ability, to my way of thinking. It sounds to me like breeding is mighty important. Well, it certainly is, Jack. Breeding and temperament are two of the uh, first things you look for in a, in a horse of any kind, and especially a quarter horse. Uh, Joe Queen, for example, was strictly a racehorse until a short time ago, and six months after we took him off the track, we were showing him, and I might say that he won the best uh, Hackamore class in the state of California last year. So if you'd like to, I'd like to show you what a real working quarter horse can do. First, Harold backs Joe Queen up with a slight rein. He's going to take him through some of the exercises used in judging the California trials. Working without cattle is called the dry routine. But these maneuvers are never used in a routine or set pattern that can be practiced. The sequence is changed in every trial. That's the figure eight. The judges look for the smoothest performance by the horse with the least amount of effort by the rider. Here's a spin to the right. Coming up is a fast spin to the left. Exercises like these show how well and how fast the horse can Respond to rain commands. This is important in a trial because a horse can lose points, but out on the range is just as necessary. If a working horse uh, gets hung up in the bridle, a calf could get away in that lost second. Cowboys refer to it as flattening out or sticking. Harold is taking Joe Queen around for a fast slide. Watch this burst of speed. Now, a good slide. The rear legs and feet should line up in a straight figure 11. The judges watch to be sure they don't spread or come off the ground. He wouldn't lose any points there. 1,200 pounds of horse, responding to commands so slight you can hardly see them. Another slide. Working without cattle in the dry routine, the horse follows the rider's lead completely. It's a lot different working stock. 
Harold is selecting the calf he wants Joe Queen to cut out of the herd and work. After that, it will all be up to the horse. You see, Jack, a good, fast calf would uh, give you lots of trouble if the rider had to tell the horse what to do. Right now, Harold is just along for the ride. Joe Queen is working the animal on his own and shows a lot of cow sense, which means that he reads the cow well and can anticipate what she's going to do next. The idea is to tire the animal and gain control. Once Joe Queen gets the animal tired or psyched out, he bring it to the center of the corral. The horse should circle both sides to show complete control. That's it. Well, Audie, it's easy to see why the quarter horse is recognized as the best working cow pony in the world. That he is, Jack. But as far as I'm concerned, he's at his very best on the racetrack. Well, I had an insight into that along with our U. Aspera crew when we visited your stable out at the Pomona racetrack yesterday. The day begins early around the stables, and another one of my favorites, the patchy agent, gets the morning bath. The excitement, of course, is out on the track. This is Bond Issue. He's about to work a quarter of a mile for time. Dallas Clark, one of the top trainers, is ready with a stopwatch. He's galloping to the pole for a running start. There he goes. Dallas stops the clock. Bondisher ran that quarter in a sizzling 22 seconds flat. Well, Audie Murphy, thanks so much for answering all those requests all at once. My pleasure, Jack. I'll talk about quarter horses at the drop of a 10-gallon hat. Say, one final question. How can you tell a really good quarter horse? Well, uh, I guess the best indication would be when everyone else in the country wants to buy him from you. <laughs> Anything else to say to our audience before we go? Sure, that's easy, Jack. You ask for it. <laughs>